Hello everyone, welcome to Marlin Chess Kids. Today we share the game played by Peko and Zora, and this beautiful game complete in 24 moves with a queen sacrifice. So let's see how the game plays. The game starts with a pawn to e4, c5, knight f3, d6, then the white play d4. And here you have the Sicilian Nash job. And here the black just capture the pawn. And after this, the knight capture. And here you have the very strong white knight in the center of the square. So after this, the black develop knight to f6. Then the white continue knight to c3. After this, the pawn to a6 and is to prevent either of the knight to b5 so this is the first five move and you can see that the white is slightly better in this position then the game continue with the bishop to g5 attacking the knight and here e6 was played then at this moment the white trying to play f4 and here you have a very strong two pawn attack in the middle of the square then the game continue with bishop to e7 after this queen f3 was played and the black play queen to c7 after this the white go for a long step and the rook is contouring the d file and they also able to attack the pawn at d6 and here the black continue to develop knight b to d come a very nice move from the white by playing a g4 attack g4 attack and this is a very nice move from the white so after this move the black play b5 and in this position the white is slightly better after 10 move then the game continue with the pawn capture the knight and the knight continue to capture then g5 and now this pawn is attacking the knight so the knight goes back to d7 and after this f5 from the white keep on moving the pawn forward and pressuring the black so here this give the black to capture the pawn and check the king and this seems to be like a position sacrifice with a one pawn so after capture the pawn the king just move inside and now the black play e5 trying to attack the knight at this move another suggestion for the black that can play would be go for a knight to e5 and this will attack the queen and after this the queen can go to d8 and protect the bishop and this will be much better if the black play this way and also the black can go for a castling so for example if the knight move to e5 attacking the queen and the queen can just move to h5 to attack the bishop then the queen can just go to d8 and protect it so here even though the white is slightly better it have nothing much can do towards the black so back to this position if you play a pawn takes the e5 pawn then this will give white a decisive advantage because the queen will go to g3 and continue attack the bishop and also have a diagonal attack the pawn at d6 and the knight can continue to attack the pawn and also attack the f5 pawn and attack the g7 pawn then the knight at c3 can jump to 
d5 and attack the queen so after this move the white has many activity that can be played in this position so after bishop to f6 then the knight can continue to play d5 continue to attack the queen then the queen go back to d8 and after this the knight can continue to attack the queen and this the white will clearly winning the queen as the black queen will be trapped so if you play the bishop to e5 continue to attack the queen and allowing an escape for the queen to move and here the queen can just move to a3 and also have the idea to attack the pawn at b at d6 after the knight capture the bishop so if you continue to play b4 to attack the queen just capture and if you move the rook then the knight just capture the knight and after the knight capture then the queen will just capture and after this series of action the white will winning a rook so back to this position so capturing the pawn will be a bad move for the black and in the actual game d5 was played and now the knight to d5 and here the knight keep on attack the knight and here white has a very strong compensation for the loss of the pawn then the queen move to b7 and here the queen keep on attack by playing h5 so back to this version if the white play rook to g1 it will be a very nice move as well after h6 from the black then we can move h4 to attack the pawn and if the bishop capture the pawn and now the queen can go to h5 and here the queen will attack the bishop and also can attack the pawn and now the queen cannot back to this position because the rook will just capture it free for example if you move the bishop to g5 then the rook can just capture the g5 bishop or is another suggestion you can just use the bishop to capture and if you capture with the pawn then the knight will capture back again and now the knight will be able to attack and fork the king and if you use the queen to capture then the knight will check the king attack the rook and attack the queen and this will be a royal flop and will be completely winning so at this position as well you can also use the rook to capture the bishop and if you capture with the pawn then the queen will capture the rook and this will be winning for the white so you have many activity, activity for the white to play therefore after queen to b7 and in the actual game the white play queen to h5 and after this move the bishop just back to f6 and then the white can just capture the bishop back again the here your black also can play a pawn to h6 and this should be much better for the black because after this now the knight can come to e6 and this will be nice move to attack the pawn and the pawn cannot capture the knight because it's being pinned by the queen so if you move the knight to attack then the knight e can go to c7 and check the king and be winning the rook and 
knight e to c7 is and attack the king so after the king move to f8 then the queen now can just move away to f3 and if the rook move away to b8 then now the pawn can play to h4 attacking the bishop and if the bishop move to f4 then now the rook can go to g1 and attack the pawn at g7 so after this move if you move the rook to defense then the knight will capture the knight and after pawn capture then the rook will capture again and after this move king capture then the knight can go to d5 and attacking the pawn and this pawn cannot be safe so again the white will have more activity in this position therefore in the actual game bishop f6 was played and after this move the knight to e6 and this is a very strong move and after this move rook a7 was played and here the knight d to c7 continue to check the king and d to c7 and check the king and this knight is controlling both of the square and this forced the king to move to e7 and after this the knight to d5 and check again and the king go back to e8 and this the black has lost the chance to go for a castling and after this move rook to g1 trying to attack the pawn so after this move the knight to b6 trying to action off the knight and now the knight takes the bishop knight takes f6 and check the king then the pawn from g capture the knight after this move here the pawn is being pinned and he cannot capture the knight the only way the black can do is capture with the bishop and in the actual game the white capture the rook and here the best move will be just capture off the knight because the knight is a very strong in this position and let's say if the knight capture if the bishop capture the knight then the pawn will just capture it back and still the white is clearly winning in this position after this rook to f8 then bishop to h3 keep protecting the pawn and the idea would be now bring the rook double up and attack and attack the pawn at f7 and we will checkmate the king so after this move the white can move up then rook d to g1 double up the rook and go for the check and if the knight goes to c4 then you have to check then now if you just use the queen to capture then the pawn will just capture it and if you use the rook to block the pawn from being forward then the rook can go to d5 and after let's say make an example move such as a a5 then you can just use a b3 to attack the knight and if the knight moves to d6 now you have another is example very nice move that the queen can go to h4 and pin the king and after this will capture the pawn and checkmate the king and this pawn at d7 is still protected so if you make another example move such as b4 then the rook can just capture and check and the pawn is being pinned and the pawn is being protected and if the king move to f8 then the queen can just capture and now queen to h8 will be a checkmate 
So if you use the rook to capture rook a takes d7, then the queen to h8 will be a checkmate. And if you move the king towards inside, then the rook can go to d5 and check the king. And here, if the king move back to f8, then the queen will just capture the knight. And again, it will be a very nice checkmate. So, back to this position. So, after this check, and let's say if the king move to e8, then you have the pawn takes f7 and check the king. And now, nothing much they can do. If you use the to take, then the queen will just capture and it will be a checkmate as well. So back to this position and after this move, the queen in the actual game just capture the pawn at e4 and with this move, the white is winning and made in 3. I give a second to figure out how the white continue to play and win the game. Well, congratulations for those who found the answer. And for those who like to enjoy the show, here are the moves that the white play and made in 3. And in the actual game, after this move, the white play rook to d8 and check the king. And after this check, the king only have one place to move, that is king to e7. And after this move, queen sacrifice by playing queen f7 and check the king. And with this, you can see that the king has no place to move. And the only way is to capture the queen. And at this move, at the move 24, the black resigns the game. And if you want to continue, if you capture the queen, then here you have a rook to g7, and this is a checkmate. And again, the king cannot be moved, and this will be a very nice checkmate. And with this, thank you.